Okay, so our next um, speaker is um, Monia Mazik, and she's going to come up right now and sit beside me. So, Monia Mazik, um, as you know, uh, at one point was described as this generation of Laura Secord. Um, how many of you guys know who Laura Secord is? You know, had to learn better. And seeing the high school crew here, so like, I had to learn better in high school. How does her daughter feel about the fact your mom was compared to like Laura Secord, like this Canadian hero? How intense was that? Like <laughs> okay, Barbara, I don't know what that's the Canadian right now. But um, just so you know, uh, that's just Barbara Arar. Um, this is uh, Monique Mazing's daughter. Um, and again, so she's, she's been known as a sort of Canadian icon, as human rights activist, but we're not going to be talking about that today. We're going to be talking about her novel, um, Miroir et Mirage, um, which is written in French and was recently published. And I'm just going to quickly, um, can someone just quickly post up the image? Um, of the document, so then you can actually see what it looks like. It's very beautiful. It's beautiful artwork, actually. So, so um, maybe first, if we can talk about the artwork, how many people can see this? Is there a way of doing the, doing the lights a bit so you can see the artwork? I know. So that's what I'm asking Dr. Ali to do that. Okay. So first, M Monia, I'm just wondering if you could talk a bit about this artwork because I know that you know you were consulted in terms of like you know. Who I work with that with uh, Intel Lane, um, which is the publisher of this book. It's a small um, Canadian francophone press. Um, so talk about the purpose to the, the image here. Like, who's the artist and what is this meant to represent? Uh, should I? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank you and thank all the organizers of uh, the event for inviting me here and also um, thank uh, the previous uh, speakers for their uh, uh, very interesting uh, topic and uh, presentation. Um, well, this is a book, I have to start a little bit about maybe introducing the book, but also, uh, but by no means it's not a, a publicity or it's not an event around the book. I think it's an excuse to speak about, uh, uh, the book is just an excuse to, to introduce uh, the topic. Uh, of our discussion. So the book is about four Muslim women. I actually do want to stop you. Sure. Because the thing is, is that the first thing they're going to see is this image. Yes. And, that's the, and, that, and I, I want to get into the theme of sometimes the first thing you see, the first thing I see you is maybe there's certain things that stick out about you. It might be your job. The first yes. thing I see is an image. I'm not going to know about the book yet. Sure. So if you want to so, connect the book. Uh, okay. <laughs> She's so bossy. I cannot say no. <laughs> so I have to, I have to listen. I, I, so um, let's just stick to the picture and uh, also stick to the title. The title is in French, it's mi Miroir et Mirage, but it's quite forward, like it, it means mirrors and mirages. And there is this idea of uh, a woman walking in the corridor, but uh, there is some light uh, coming into her face, so we don't know if this is a spiritual, we don't know if this is the Virgin Mary, we don't know if she is uh, uh, religious, uh, but at the same time we see her uh, her um, legs uh, showing, so uh, it's kind of, yes, it's a mirror, but also there is this idea of a mirror. You think that you reach to something, but it is not. And um, so those two ideas of mirrors, of self-examination, of looking into ourselves, who we are, but also there is the idea of deception, of uh, mirages, of uh, not knowing exactly who we are. So uh, this is, uh, um, to tell you the truth, it's, uh, I don't know who did this, uh, I don't know the artist, it's, uh, we found this picture on iStock, and uh, my publisher uh, presented, uh, present, uh, like they presented four pictures to me, and um, I like this one because, uh, if you read the book, and if you get to know the uh, characters of the book, these four women, uh, then there is always this idea of looking into ourselves inside, but also searching for happiness, searching for love, searching for who we are, and then also this idea of um, thinking that we grasp or we get what is happiness, and then we realize that it is not really what we wanted. So this idea of marriages. Thank you so much. Yes. 
so we can turn that off. We can turn that off now. Okay, thank you so much, Monia, for, for letting me go with that. Um, so now, I, I guess I would like to first ask you about the book. You can tell us about the characters, um, but also, why is it you wanted to write a novel? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I, I, I really like writing. Uh, I'm not a writer by profession, uh, and uh, I, I never had the intention to, uh, I wouldn't say to become a writer, but I always wrote before I had my journal with me, and I wrote, and uh, it's something that followed me all, all along. Uh, however, I took a very special path, and a very unusual path. I went to business school, and uh, after that, uh, I, I even did uh, my graduate studies in finance, and I ended up with a PhD in finance. And uh, it's a very, very uh, special field, uh, so much run by men, usually. Uh, as you can know, the disaster we are facing now in the world, <laughs> you collapse of the economy, so you can understand why. But not only men, uh, sorry for the men who are being here, I'm just joking. Uh, but, sort of. Yes, no, but there is some truth in there. I'm not saying that it's not only me, there are a lot of economists, and there is a whole movement of people saying we need more women. And uh, anyway, so it's not our topic here. The topic is about, well, um, so I find myself in a very uh, field where there are a lot of uh, men, um, but not only that, very few women, and let alone very few women with hijab. So it's very, I always feel like, you know, uh, I am under attack. So I have to, I developed a lot of uh, those skills of, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> pushback. Anyway, but my inner soul really wanted always to write. And I think this is what, uh, it got me back now. And uh, I found myself writing after uh, what happened to my husband and after, uh, uh, you know, this ordeal. So I uh, wrote a uh, first uh, book, but that was not a novel. That was true, like, that was um, a memoir, exactly. And uh, I liked that so much that I decided that uh, I'm going to continue writing. But this time, uh, well, people, you know, it's funny. I was reading uh, yesterday something about uh, people saying that there is uh, a human right fatigue or torture fatigue. So people are so much, fat you know, tired of national security and tired of hearing human rights and victimization and stuff like that. So I think... Um, I said, okay, I, I want something, I want to speak to my community, but I wanted to speak to the broader community. Uh, and the best way to speak is to write. Um, and it's a, it's a difficult task because I never wrote fiction before. And um, so you have to find, okay, what are the characters? Uh, how are you are going? You have to find an interesting story. So this is hard, but I enjoyed that. And um, finally, I was able to, to write this book. And, uh, um, and I like the idea of uh, what Dr. Ali was saying about, we need to, to take, we need to, to make, uh, to joke about ourselves. We need to, to take ourselves less seriously than we think who we are. <coughs> And uh, one of the ways to do that is to just to, to write fiction and to, uh, to introduce your own humor to uh, some tragedy and uh, some, some stories, everyday stories. And um, personally, and this is what I think, it's the best way to, to speak to the community, uh, to tell them maybe, I mean, sometimes, and everybody knows, some, it's so hard to tell people, don't do this or do that, but when you, tell the story, uh, you have so much freedom to, you know, to tell whatever you want. It's like you make a movie, it's like, uh, so uh, I think that was my uh, sort of thing, but it's still a fiction, and uh, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's a big deal, it's just uh, a journey, uh, as other journey that we take in our lives. Okay, so introduce us now to the four characters. Well, okay. 
There are four women, Muslim women, and all of them live in Ottawa. So one of them is Louise, and this is, I'm answering you, Omnur, because you were saying about convert. And I'm so happy that one of my characters is a convert. Good, but maybe you won't like her, I don't know. I wanted to avoid stereotypes, but I think I fall into stereotypes, and it's very hard not to fall into stereotypes because you have to start with with a sort of a micro uh, cosm or s some small reality. How are you going to, to, to capture your big word? And I captured my big word into four women. And uh, one of them is a convert, and uh, she's a French Canadian. And her mother is a French Canadian as well. And um, both of them, uh, they live together. She's a single mother. And uh, her daughter uh, and the mother is uh, even atheist because uh, she is uh, a daughter of uh, La Révolution Tranquille in Quebec and she rejected religion. And then uh, her daughter, she goes to University of Ottawa here. <laughs> and, I don't know. and then all of a sudden she fell in love with a guy, a Muslim guy, and she embraces Islam. And this is a new reality of a lot of families who they grow up not in a religious environment and they see another generation coming up who is going to embrace religion and not Catholic, not Protestant, sometimes Buddhism, sometimes Zen, but with this case she embraced Islam. And there is a second character and her name is Sally. And Sally is from Pakistan. And her parents named her Sunny because they really wanted her to fit into the Canadian society. They didn't want to name her Ayman. They wanted to have the perfect girl uh, coming to get, like really having all the chances by herself, by when, when she was born. And uh, Sally grew up here and she was a perfect girl. And um, she had only one problem. She's so much addicted to her Blackberry, uh, and she loves technology. And uh, there is something that will happen to, to Sally, and I'm not going to tell you what. But it is related with her Blackberry. Um, there is... Uh, what else? There's a bit more about Sally, too. Sally is, is now here. Yes. Her parents really want yes. Yes, that's her true. to fit in, and now yes. she's rebelling against them. Yes, and Sally, what happened to her, she discovered religion through the internet. And she discovered religion through the sheikh in the internet. And this is a new trend happening. It is a new reality, and uh, we don't speak about that in the in the mosque. We don't speak that in the Muslim gathering. So I wanted to speak about that. So Sally decided all of a sudden to wear niqab. So she is covering all her face, and she becomes so much religion that you know her her parents do not even recognize their own religion in their own daughter. So, and there is a tragedy happening there because you have a daughter, you have all your dreams. She, you want her to go to school and she goes to school, but she decides to become another person and she becomes to criticize her parents, to criticize their Islam because she has a new sort of Islam that she learned on the internet and she asks everything she wants to know, she asks her sheikh about it. So she really is uh, a techie girl, but at the same time, she has relig religion mixed with uh, um, technology, and it's very explosive thing if you want to know that. We have uh, Lama, uh, she is a Palestinian girl, immigrant parents, very rich people. We always think of immigrant Arab or, uh, you know, like poor people driving taxi, but we forget about the lifestyle of some immigrant who have here in Canada and the very very rich people very spoiled and uh, but Lama is not like her mom she is different she's a little bit like rebellious and she loves her dad and her dad he's not in Canada he is in Dubai because a lot of our families here in Canada the parent the father is abroad and the mother with the kids are here because the kids would have to go to school, but also the dad has to work and send the money abroad to support, yes, to support the family. So we have this girl, and finally, 
We have a Tunisian one, and it's not me at all. <laughs> and I, I'm true, I, I'm not lying to you here, <laughs> believe me. And the Tunisian here, her name is Africa. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Um, so her name is Emma, and uh, she is. She came here to study. Um, and uh, she she got married to a guy, and uh, she she ended up divorcing, and she has a small girl with a daughter, and uh, she found herself in social housing. So she represents a lot of our immigrant living in social housing, and uh, without again falling into stereotypes, but she represents also some um, disillusion with Canada, some deception, sort of. You know, you think that you come here, you study, you want to, to have some good life, and then, um, and anyway, she had some kind of problems, personal problems, and um, she has to, she, she, she goes at some point to, to work in, in, in Dubai, and um, this is also another reality of our families and of our people in, living in Canada. So, um, now this book is written in French, yes, so um, that's a language you're most comfortable in writing in, in terms of fiction, but when writing the book, were you concerned about how uh, people within the Muslim community would react? I mean, I think it was interesting, you can see people laughing when you're describing some characters, I guess they sound so familiar um, to them, but were you concerned because um, your book, I mean, from, from my own um, reading it, and again, going back to the image, um, your book isn't really about black and white. It isn't really showing me, a, it's not about, like, I want to show them as a positive you know, version of the Muslims. You're really trying to show real life. And, and um, but sometimes, um, I think that in, in within our communities, we really feel, because again, we're defensive, um, we really want to show the best face. But you, you know, you want to sort of, you're, you're trying to go back from that and try to show what you're actually seeing. So, have you any concerns about criticism around that? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think I wrote it because I really enjoyed these, uh, you know, I, I started, um, some women, I, I, some characters, I, I didn't like them at the beginning and, you know, like Sally was so much rude to her parent and so much arrogant and then there are things that happened to her and then at the end, and I've heard but these are people who read the book and they are not Muslim, but they told me at the end they like them all. So I think I didn't, I don't know what Muslim, I'm not sure, I mean, who read it from the Muslim community, I, I don't know. But um, uh, I didn't write it because I wanted the Muslim community to read it. I write it because I like it, what I was doing. But uh, if people, identify themselves with, with some character, that's fine. I, that would be something I, I, I would really want to. Uh, but my intention is to, it's, it's just, you know, some observation that I had in my life that I wanted to, to speak about them. Sometimes it's just imagination and, and um, it's, it, it's not um, a controversy that I want to create. It's more like debate. Uh, curiosity, uh, you know, um, I have my colleagues at work who would come to me and would ask me questions, and I think that that's, that's really what, what's important when you write a book, you just make, let the ball roll, and uh, um, if people like it, that's fine, if they don't like it, that's still okay, because uh, I would be curious to know what they don't like, and I would be hearing their, their feedback, um, but I'm not here to create controversy or, you know, if, if Muslim people read it and love it, that means at least I was able to, to, to capture some, something true. If they don't like it, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I don't understand anything from what's going on and I'm, I need to go and do my homework better. Anyway, so, yeah. So the reality, because it is written in French, um, the majority of people in the community probably can't read it, and, and unless they're 
Because um, I mean, many people are bilingual in the community, but I don't know if they're just like reading French for fun as opposed to, yeah. to and pass government exams. So, um, but I'm wondering, what is the feedback from the people who have read it? Because um, I mean, I, I, I was able to go to you, um, your book launch, and there was some really positive feedback. But again, it was from people from outside of the community who were francophone. Um, so um, I'd like you to reflect on like, some of the positive feedback, and then also, you know, what's your reflection on the fact that you know we live in Canada, but we are divided between English and French as much as we, you know, we don't really talk about that that division as much. But there is really two worlds. I mean, if you can write a novel and people now can get the, to know the side of you that's a novelist. But it's the francophones who can get to know that. It's not the anglophone side. And what are your feelings about that? Uh, yeah, the feedback is 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 good. Um, um, and again, um, I'm talking here about mainstream media. Um, so people uh, like the idea. They like the idea of who are these Muslim women. You know, uh, they are wearing a veil, they are uh, walking on the street uh, wearing as any other, other women who is not Muslim or, you know, uh, they blend with the society, some of them they show off, some other not, so who they are. And with this book, I'm trying to give a glimpse of, of, of what they are, and again, this is not the only reality, but it is some of the reality. Um, it is... Yeah, I write in. I write mainly in French. I write English, but uh, for me, it's it was a, a, a choice to write in French because it's a language I grew up with and I'm comfortable at, and I, I like reading in French and writing. Um, and it's also. Um, you are telling me it exposes, yes, that's the true, it, it kind of exposes uh, this two solitude that we have in Canada, but not only two solitude, we have multiple solitude. We have, yes, the French and English, but within the French and within the English, we have multiple other solitudes. And as those four women into the, in that novel, uh, after all, they are all by themselves. They know each other, sometimes they meet, but they are by themselves and they struggle on their own. And in, in, in the English Canada, the, we have a Muslim community, maybe much bigger than the rest of, like maybe in like Quebec, but still we have different groups, different communities, and people are always arguing against each other. You know, uh, mosque against mosque, uh, groups against groups, and so we have multiple identities, we have multiple belongings, and um, uh, in in Quebec, for example, and and maybe this book because it's written in French and it is intended, of course, into a francophone French speaking uh, audience or uh, readers. Um, I, it's a very, you, you know, in Quebec, the, there was four, th five years ago, there was Commission Taylor Bouchard about the reasonable accommodation. There was a big debate that is not, well, it's coming here a little bit, but it was really like, it, it sort of created a lot of big controversy in Quebec. Should we give those immigrants or especially the Muslim, uh, some special treatment or not? So that was so. It's it's a society that really um, understand uh, it's uh, the multiculturalism in a very different way. And um, even with that, I found people very open to read about. And I think when we are always complaining. Uh, well, we don't, uh, people, um, you know, don't like us, or people, yes, there is some truth in there, yes, there are stereotypes, yes, there are misunderstandings, but, but we have to, we have to be more, uh, uh, we have to take a step forward, and we have to produce things, we have to talk to the other, we have to write. Uh, to produce movies and uh, to use our little skills, whatever we have, to 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 say yes, this is who we are. Um, we are not going to succeed always, but sometimes 
one of us is going to succeed, and I hope that this is going to happen. Like Zara um, as she succeeded. We might be with her, against her, whatever, but she succeeded, and she portrayed the Muslim community, and I think we have to really admit that. Now, whether is it the only best way to do it? No, I think there are many other ways, and whoever has a different opinion, had to, to just do something else and and, uh, and participate into that discussion. Thank you so much for